Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Saturday, October 27th, and I'm not sure how good the audio quality is going to be here because I've had to retreat into an enclosed echoey kitchen to record this because I haven't been able to find any decent quiet spots to record a video all day, and this is the best I could come up with right now before it gets too late, so I hope you can understand my voice. But here's Hurricane Sandy, you can see as a mammoth of a storm off the southeast U.S. coast right now, starting to spread rain into the Carolinas and uh, finally leaving uh, the Florida and the Bahamas behind and uh, drying out for them now as the rain shield moves on. And she's now moving north-northeast away from the Bahamas and will continue that motion for about a day or so before she starts making a turn towards the northwest, coming into the mid-Atlantic and New England coastlines in response to this trough we've been talking about coming into the center of the country. You can see the funnel boundary down the eastern seaboard now, and we have this blocking high over southeast Canada to the north of this big low to the east, and this trough comes in, starts digging in a negative tilt, and just hooks this right in to the northeast, and the general track I idea has remained the same for the last several days and she now looks like uh, she's going to phase into a massive storm coming on shore as expected. All of the models now agree on the solution as we will see in a bit. But if we look at the storm here, notice the structure. We have everything on the western side. As we've talked about for some days now, this is going to not look like your typical hurricane and we have a lot of dry air coming in on the east and south sides and is eating away at all of the convection there. It's all on the northwest side because there is baroclinic support. This trough in here is inducing upper divergence and what that means is the air is spreading out and allowing air to rush into the surface and rise, creating these thunderstorms on the northwestern part of the storm and near the center here. And this is baroclinic support. And the storm is not self-sustaining. It is a hurricane warm core, yet it would not be alive right now if it weren't for this trough to the northwest and the baroclinic support it is getting. You can see the dry air coming in, but the pressure has lowered over 15 millibars since yesterday. It's back down to 960. It was over 975 yesterday. So despite the appearance of the storm, it has strengthened. And this brings up a very important point because I get the feeling that a lot of people are dismissing the potential impact of this storm because of how it looks and because of how strong it is. The NHC even downgraded this to a tropical storm for a time yesterday. It is now a hurricane, but a minimal hurricane with 75 mile per hour winds. And I think a lot of people probably are looking at this and saying, well, it looks like it's a minimal hurricane and it doesn't even have an eye. It doesn't even look that threatening. So why should I be worried? And there's a reason that this is going to cause a lot of damage. First of all, it's immense size. This is an absolutely massive circulation. Tropical storm force winds extend out 520 miles. According to the Hurricane Center, here is their wind field map. No, notice how large this is. Bermuda is under a tropical storm warning. The storm is over 600 miles away. And this wind field is abnormally large for any kind of tropical cyclone because of the baroclinic enhancement that it is getting. And this matters because you might think, okay, so everyone around me for 500 miles in radius is going to get the same winds I'm getting. Why should I care? The reason you should care is because if the storm is that large, it takes more time for the maximum winds to pass over you. So suppose that the storm is moving 20 miles per hour when it comes into the northeast. If it's a 1,000 mile diameter field of tropical storm force winds, it's going to take 50 hours for those winds to clear out, which means you will be under a uh, tropical storm force at least winds for that amount of time. And although that kind of wind is not by itself for a short period necessarily that damaging, it over a prolonged period of time can cause massive cumulative damage and along with rainfall causing inland flooding can make trees weaker, cause them to fall, cause power lines to fall. And what you'd end up with is a massive situation with lots of power outages, flooding and prolonged wind damage to buildings and trees and this is the big problem with this system fairly similar to Irene except bigger and probably going to be stronger because she's going to be strengthening coming inland. Irene was weakening and it was coming up at this angle and the other problem here is that this is going to be coming in from the southeast perpendicular to the coast, a very rare track for the northeast. This is going to pile in a massive storm surge up Long Island Sound for again a prolonged period of time. These winds are going to be bringing a long strong fetch off the ocean. The storm surge is larger when they're 
there is a longer fetch of wind, even if the wind is fairly weak, and this kind of storm surge uh, will cause uh, water rises over 10 feet in some areas that could cause coastal flooding and damage for an extended number of hours as this comes in. And even as far south as Delaware Bay could get a storm surge depending on exactly where the center comes ashore. And of course there will be hurricane force winds still near the core because this is of tropical nature. Here's the GFS model coming in towards the coast. This is at 54 hours out. The pressure has now deepened to 949 millibars, and you can see all of this wind coming up Long Island Sound. Notice these dashed red lines. These are the thicknesses of the 1,000 to 500 millibar air layer, and when the thickness is large, it means the temperature is higher. And so thus, you can see this is very warm core with concentric red circles circling the center. So this is still a hurricane, yet there's cold air coming down the back side, and it's getting a ton of clinic enhancement on the western side because you can see all this warm air being pumped up and over this cold air coming down from the northwest which is inducing very heavy rains reminiscent of a warm front a backdoor warm front if you will extending up in this direction propagating from northeast to southwest so the heaviest rains will likely occur west and southwest of the center as it comes ashore which means eastern Pennsylvania Maryland Virginia West Virginia and New Jersey going to get potential flooding problems and the mountains in here in especially West Virginia could get up to a few feet of snow which is another amazing thing to have with a storm like this. This is like nothing you've ever seen because it's a hurricane, yet it's not. It's being enhanced by the mid-latitudes in such a way that it is strengthening coming into the coast even though it doesn't look like it should be strengthening, and that is dangerous because it may not be perceived as the true threat that it is, and I'm not trying to increase the hype over this system just that folks are aware that this is going to be one heck of a beast and will likely rival Irene type damage for many of these areas of the Northeast that were hit by Irene when she came up here. So folks should be aware of that kind of situation. It's an Irene type storm and Irene caused 15 billion dollars of damage. This will likely be a multi-billion dollar storm as well. Here's the rainfall from the HPC showing over a six to eight inches over a wide swath over Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. This is not a horrid amount of rain. In fact, this looks like less rain than Irene brought to some areas, but this is a very large storm, and if she brings in a lot of moisture, it uh, could cause isolated amounts even heavier than this in the strong bands that rotate over the same area repeatedly on the back side of the storm. The northern side of the storm will probably be rather drier in comparison due to the dry air rotating up from the eastern side. As you can see here, this side of the storm is fairly benign um, in terms of the rainfall, but the baroclinic support will mean the western side brings a lot of rain. But the main effects will probably be the wind and the storm surge over this entire area is going to be quite a prolonged event, 24 to 48 hours of this before the storm finally turns off towards the northeast. Here's the model tracks, very close in agreement, bring it in, stall it for a short time, and then bring it out to the northeast in the flow. But this is going to be a long time of this rotating around over this general area. And uh, you can see the NHC track in orange here, bringing it in towards, I believe you call that Atlantic Point or something, the southern point of New Jersey, where Atlantic City is down here. I do believe that's where Atlantic City is. I haven't studied up on my New Jersey geography enough, um, but it's coming into the very southern part of New Jersey. My track is more in line with the GFS and European Ensemble mean, which both agree on a central Jersey landfall. I didn't have time to draw up a track map today, but it's basically the same track as yesterday, which had this into central Jersey. But again, specific landfall point won't matter as much with the system because it is very spread out um, and the pressure lowering while baroclinic support is aiding it means the wind field will continue expanding even larger than it already is and we'll be talking about winds being spread out over a large area the maximum will still be near the center uh, but the landfall point deferring by 50 miles really will not affect anything that much so uh, that's what we're looking at so overall there's really not much change in the forecast reasoning this is now going to be coming in with a pressure of sub 950 millibars deepening as it comes ashore not weakening as Irene did, which means the potential for strong winds in the New York City area and New Jersey and Massachusetts and Connecticut, all of those states there on the coast is a lot higher than it was for Irene. Cat 1 winds are likely near the center, extending out over 100 miles. Tropical storm force winds over 500 miles away and all the rain in the storm surge. So I'm just trying to convey the true threat that this storm poses, given that it is 
unlike anything we've really seen before in its structure, its behavior, and how it is coming into the coast. So hopefully folks are aware of this situation and are prepared adequately for what is likely to be an historic storm rivaling many of the storms that have occurred since the 1938 hurricane. So that is it for today. I will have an up another update tomorrow and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.